Hey, thank you. And hello, everyone. It's been so fun to see you as you trickle in from all over. Um, my name is Megan Faulkner Brown, and I am coming to you from the American Craft Studio just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'm so excited to be here today to show you how to make some fun kind of back to school treats. I can't believe it's already time that summer is coming to an end and that we're going back to school. Um, I have six kids who are will all be going back to school here shortly. And it's always kind of bittersweet for me to, to realize that summer is over because summer is when you do all the fun stuff, right? So anyway, so again, thank you for being here. And um, today we're I'm going to show you how to make some rice cereal treats. They're super easy to make. They're so delicious. And it's something that I'm confident that you all, all can do. And um, so we'll make a recipe together. Very simple, only three ingredients. And then I'm gonna show you um, just how to cut some of them out and then decorate them using some of our meltables that are available, available excuse me, at your local Michaels store. So let's, let's get to it, shall we? Okay. So I have here some rice cereal. This is just Kellogg's uh, Rice Krispie cereal. We have some, a bag of mini marshmallows and I actually have an extra bag and I will show you why when we get to that point. Um, and then I have some butter. So you don't have to use the specific brand of rice cereal, but I'm sure many of you have like your own favorite recipe that you use, or maybe you're using your grandma's or your dad's or your whomever, um, or you might just use the recipe that's on the back of the cereal box. You Most uh, rice cereals will have a recipe for these rice cereal treats on the back. Um, for sure, Kellogg's does, and that's actually the majority um, of the recipe that I will show you today. I just add a little bit extra um, and I'll go over that here in a sec. So, but since we're not um, in an actual kitchen, <laughs> um, I'm going to show you how to do these in the microwave. And I have to say that I kind of prefer to do them in the microwave because I feel like it's a little less messy and it goes a little bit quicker. And um, I think you kind of can control, control things a, a little bit little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this microwave safe bowl. And right here I have just a stick of butter and I'm going to do three tablespoons. And if you look on your, um, on your cube of butter, they'll have markings that show how, you know, how many markings in is how many tablespoons. So I'm going to go ahead and do three tablespoons. And let's see, oops. I'm just gonna slice down and I'm gonna put it into my bowl. Okay, so that's three tablespoons. And then what I'm gonna do, well, one kind of little hack I, I should say is, if you, we're gonna put the marshmallows in here in just a sec. And what I actually like to do is I just take the remaining butter from my stick and I'll just kind of go around inside of the bowl, just kind of give it like a, a light greasing. And that is because as the marshmallows melt, it makes it not as sticky to the sides of the bowl. So I just do kind of like a little light greasing um, and that butter that's in the bottom will melt and spread out. So it will be kind of non-stick on the bottom right there. Okay, next I'm gonna take this full, full bag um, of mini marshmallows. We're gonna cut them open and we're gonna dump them in. So one thing, oops. okay, so you can see I just have them in, in the bowl. 
One thing to, to note is that as you try this, this might be some of your first time doing them in the microwave. And it's, it'll be fun because you can peer in and you can see that as the, as the marshmallows melt, they'll kind of puff up and get big. And so what you'll wanna make sure is that your bowl is big enough <laughs> to hold. So it's kind of hard to judge and tell you like, oh, this is the size bowl that you need just because I don't know your microwave sizes. Um, but we're gonna give it a go because this is my first time in this space using this bowl in this microwave. So this could be entertaining. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So all I'm gonna do is stick this in the microwave. I'm gonna put it in just at first for about a minute and then I'll take it out and I'll give it a stir and then it will need more time than that. But I just wanna make sure that as we're doing this, it doesn't like bubble, you know, bubble up and bubble over in this, in this microwave here. So I'm just gonna take this, put it into the microwave and put it in for a minute and then I'll check on it here in just a sec. So while that's doing it, one thing I wanted to say was that what I love about um, this kind of treat, this cereal treat, is that you can kind of use any cereal that you love. So let's say you liked Fruity Pebbles or Cocoa Krispies or um, like Graham, or the Graham one, I can't remember what the Graham one is. Golden Grams, yeah. <laughs> or like Lucky Charms, you can, you can definitely use any kind of um, sugary breakfast cereal that you prefer. So in the past, I've done it where I've used um, like half of the, the rice cereal and then I've added half of a fruity one or a chocolate one, or I've done them before with like Cocoa Puff. So you can totally get creative and just, you know, use any of those kinds that, that you like. And just, it's just fun to kind of play around. So, okay, so my, um, microwave just beeped at me. So you see they, they puffed up just a little bit and I'm just gonna go ahead and stick them, stick them back in. You don't really need to stir it. And I'm gonna put it back in for one more minute. Oops. Oh. We're just gonna let it do its thing. And I should say, obviously you can still totally do them on the stove. Um, that's how I grew up making them. And I've, I've kind of transitioned since having children doing them in, in the microwave. Cause again, I feel like it's a little less messy and you're not getting like, you know, your huge stainless steel pot, super sticky and hard to clean. Um, so this has worked out well for me doing it in the microwave, but if you're doing it at home over the stove, one thing I would just say is that you just wanna make sure that you don't overcook your, um, your marshmallows because then they'll get hard once they, once they dry, essentially. Once they cool down, it'll become hard. So think of it like candy. If you were making hard candy, um, the longer you boil the sugar, essentially, the harder the candy would get. So I kind of like to remind myself that of making sure you don't want to like overdo the marshmallow part. So, okay. So here we have some fluffy, fluffy melted marshmallow goodness. And I'm just stirring it together and kind of incorporating that melted butter. So what I'm going to do, stirring? oh, yeah. We had a question. Have you ever tried using cornflakes? Ooh, I haven't, but that actually sounds delicious. That, that sounds amazing because it's like a little bit salty and a lot of it sweet. I love that idea. Um, okay, so you can see it melted right up. So if your bowl, if you felt like your bowl was big enough to hold six cups of the rice cereal, then you can like go ahead and measure your cereal into this bowl. But what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna get another bowl that I know is, is bigger so that I kind of have more room to like work 
folding the, the rice cereal together with the melted marshmallow. So I'm just gonna take the rice cereal and I'm gonna measure six cups. So one, I'm gonna put it right into the bowl. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got the six cups here and we have our melted marshmallows. And again, if your bowl is big enough with the melted marshmallow, feel free to go ahead and put those right in to that bowl. But I'm gonna pour the melted marshmallow into this bowl just to be safe. Okay, so now, oops, now I'm just gonna mix them together. Now, I should say, <clears throat> I, I personally like my rice cereal treats on the gooey side. I know everyone kind of has a different preference and that is totally fine. So if you're making these and you're like, um, they look a little gooey, I'd rather have them be a little bit more sturdy, then go right ahead and add some more of your rice cereal to it. Um, because it's, it's really a forgiving, forgiving recipe in that regard. You can add a little bit more. Um, the other thing is like, if at this stage you wanted to add in some sprinkles or some candies, or even if you did like some M&Ms, they might melt a, a little bit, but you, you'd still be able to fold in some fun things that you wanted into the Rice Krispies. So that is always an option. I've done it where I've used sandwich cookies before. Um, I've done like nerd candies, done sprinkles a lot. But what I'm gonna show you right now is just adding a little bit more of the marshmallows at this stage. So right now it's, you know, it's been cooling for, you know, a couple minutes as we've kind of folded it in. And what I'm gonna do is just take some of these marshmallows and just put in like a handful or two so that, I mean, as if there's not enough gooey deliciousness in there already, um, just so that when you're eating them, you kind of get these like little surprise pockets of, you know, of pillowy marshmallows in there. So like I said, I'm just gonna grab a handful or two and they'll melt a little bit, but they probably won't melt um, a ton and then you just kind of fold them in like so so yeah so yummy okay so now I'm gonna take a uh, this is like a nine by 13 and I'm just going to use some nonstick cooking spray or you could use your butter too. And then I'm just going to coat the pan. Oops. And then I'm going to put these bad boys in here. And this is this, this is a sticky, sticky proposition at this point because <laughs> Your hands will probably get some of the, you know, some of the marshmallows on them and that's okay. And then you'll probably be inclined to like bite them off your hand, which is also okay. But it definitely is, definitely is sticky, but in the best way. So I'm just, look at that, it's so yum. So I'm gonna show you another thing that I like to do. Look at that, <laughs> it's so good. Okay, so I take this nonstick cooking spray and I'll actually put it, just I'm gonna spray it on my hands, which sounds messy, but it's gonna help you not be as messy. So I just take the spray, just kind of spray a little bit on my hand 
then on my other hand, then I like rub them together. And then when I push down into the pan, it doesn't stick as much. And again, I know everyone might take their, their uh, rice cereal treats a little bit differently. I don't really like to like pack them in because I feel like I kind of like them to be a little more loosey goosey. So you don't really need to like pound them down. But you doing that, um, that trick with the nonstick cooking spray is so helpful because you might still get a little bit on your hand, but definitely not nearly as much <laughs> as if you didn't. Um, some people just straight up use water and just like a little light, um, like sprinkling of water on their hands, um, which also works. I prefer to use the, the cooking spray um, just because for whatever reason in my head, I think it works better. <laughs> and in my head, I'm also like, I don't want the water to make my, you know, my rice cereal soggy, even though I don't really think it does. But I know some people do it that way and it works well for them as well. Okay, so here we have our delicious and fresh batch of crispy rice treats. And um, just kind of before we go into like cutting them out and decorating, um, again, like you can feel free to put any other kind of inclusions in here, whether it be sprinkles or, you know, Oreos or nut or butter, whatever it is that you think would be, would make a fun little surprise. You can also use like that last step I did where I folded in just like extra mini marshmallows. Um, I've done it where I've used like the fruit flavored mini marshmallows, which are also fun. Um, so you can really just get creative. And the next time you're at a grocery store and, you know, walk down the aisle with, uh, with walk down the cereal aisle and just kind of say, okay, would that taste good in a, you know, one of these treats? And it's just fun to experiment and um, kind of come up with your own, you know, your own recipe. So the other thing that some people will do is like fold in some, some vanilla extract um, when, the, when the marshmallows have melted, which gives it like a nice, more rich flavor. I've done it before where I've mixed in cinnamon, just some ground cinnamon, which is also really, really delicious. I've done nutmeg kind of more towards the holidays. So this is kind of just a good base recipe to use and kind of build on. Um, so... I hope you take the liberty to kind of like use your creativity and and go wild with some of this stuff. So, okay, so I'm going to set this back here and these I'm going to set aside. We had made some ahead of time just to show because um, these will I'd I'd prefer them to kind of be able to set up a little bit and like congeal congeal <laughs> together. So I'm going to use another pan that we made, um, I think yesterday maybe they made them, and I'm going to show you how to decorate them with some of our meltables. So, <clears throat> excuse me, are there any questions at this point? No, are we good? Okay, so you can kind of see the difference. I'm not exactly sure um, which recipe we made here, but this is a, like a jelly roll pan, a pretty standard size. And you can see it, you know, it's bigger, but they're going to be a little bit thinner, which is totally fine. Um, but again, I, I, uh, I like them to be a little looser and kind of more gooey. Um, the other thing that's great about that just simple recipe is it's very easy to double or triple and you know, if you like them really thick, you can use one of these casserole dishes. So you get like a, you know, a big honking thick treat, which is so yum. So not really a right or wrong way, just, just a matter of preference. But this is, again, this is like a jelly roll pan. It's thinner, it's probably about a half inch. And um, we're gonna take some cookie cutters. So with it being back to school, um, I'm gonna show you how to just do some cute apples. And these are gonna be like little notebooks. 
And this is a pencil. Uh, my friend Callie, who is Sweet Sugar Bell, uh, who has products in Michaels as well. These are from, these are from her. So we're going to use her cutters. I'm going to show you just some fun things that we can do. All right. One thing, if you don't have cookie cutters, then you could very easily like go onto a computer and print off, you know, like a clip art that you find online um, in the shape of an apple or a pencil um, and just set it down onto your treats and then just take like a little steak knife and kind of cut, cut around it. So if you don't have these shapes, don't, don't even worry about it. Um, you know, or you could even just kind of freehand like a stencil that you then use, you could use and kind of cut out your own, your own shape. So this one's easy because this is just a rectangle. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to press down like so. I'm going to do a few of these so we can do a couple different subjects. So I'm just pressing down. Okay, then I'm gonna take the apple, which is also could be a cute pumpkin you could use in the fall. Let's see. Okay, then we've got our pencil. All right, so I don't have it like actual spatula on me at the moment. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this here knife and I'm just gonna kind of lift them up and just get my pieces, my shapes out. Just set them down here on parchment paper. So we've got a few notebooks and a few apples and our pencils. There's a question asking, I guess, more so what you prefer to work with the thicker ones or with the thinner ones. So for what for what we're doing, um, like covering them in uh, in the meltables, I do think that the thinner ones uh, make a little bit more sense just because the, the meltables will coat the, the treat. And if they're like super thick, then it might be hard to like actually physically wrap your, <laughs> your mouth around the whole thing. Um, but, but with that said, you could easily, with the thicker ones, you could easily just like slice a portion of them off to eat them. Um, I think like, I, I think either is, is like totally fine. The thicker ones, I think, are make a little bit more of like an impact if you were gifting them. Um, but regardless, whoever gets to eat them is gonna, you know, be so happy and, and love them. So, as far as my that was a that was a politician answer, right? <laughs> I didn't really answer your question. So, I think for what we're doing today with this, the the thinner ones would probably make the most sense. Final answer. <laughs> okay. So we have these cut out. And so now what I'm going to do is take our yummy meltables 
Um, I don't know if you, let me just plug this real quick. I don't know if you've had a chance to see these in your local Michael stores yet, but they are so wonderful. They are, they're basically like candy, candy wafers. When I say candy kind of bunny, like air quotes, they're technically not like a chocolate, um, a true chocolate, but they are just like a confectionery coating that are super easy to work with. They work awesome in the microwave. They, they have a really great snap to them. You can use them for so many things, for cakes, for cake pops, for cookies. Um, they're, so, they're so awesome. We have a lot of them available at your local Michael store. So I hope you've had a chance to see them and give them a try. So I'm gonna take for our, I'm gonna start with some, um, start with our apples and I'm going to microwave them and start it off at about a minute and then I'll give it, give it a little stir. Um, and then I'm gonna show you a technique that you can use to just coat the tops of these treats. But the other thing is that you definitely don't have to like cover them completely all in the, the meltables. So as an example, like if you wanted to just, and I'll, I'll do some of these just, just for funsies, <laughs> but if you wanted to just like drizzle these, you know, drizzle these with some of the meltables, you know, red here for the body of the apple and green for the, you know, the top for the leaf, that's totally awesome, totally great. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how you can like coat them so they're completely covered, which is also great and yummy. I think I have a couple of questions for you. Yeah. Um, and he was asking, do the multiples have a taste or do they, are they just for decorative purposes? So some of the multiples do have a taste. These ones that I'm using today are just decorative. So they, well, they have a delicious taste. <laughs> it's like, just like a creamy vanilla um, flavor, but we do also have some other flavors that will be available soon, like a lemon or a you know peppermint or flavors like that. But these ones that are colored will just be um, a vanilla flavor. Okay. And then Dee is asking, can the vegetables be used in a chocolate fountain? Ooh. So I personally have never tried that. I. I haven't tried it, so I'm not speaking from personal experience. And I'm looking at my colleague here, and <laughs> we're both like, ah, don't know the answer to that. But I'm going to say yes, that they would, um, because, because of the nature of how they're, they're made and how they're not like a true chocolate. They're a compound chocolate. Um, so I, I think that they would work just fine. I hope I'm not leading you astray. And if I have, I apologize, <laughs> but I think they would totally work just fine. I hope my dear friend, like I said, I'm sorry if it's, that's not the case. <laughs> um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little apple guys on this rack you see how i have it on a cooling rack with a parchment paper liner underneath and this is one way that you can easily coat them and i just melted the melted the meltables which always sounds redundant and then you just kind of spread it around just kind of let it fall and then sometimes if I remember, I'll grab like just some little vinyl gloves and kind of when I do this, just because your hands will get a little bit colorful, which again is which is fine. And you can just kind of shake off the excess of the chocolate, okay, or the meltables rather. So that's one way. The other way is to just like straight up dip it into the meltables. And this is if you wanted to like get the whole thing, the whole thing uh, coated, which is also delicious. And so I just dipped it in on its front, like on one side, 
used my spoon to flip it over and then I just kind of will scrape, scrape it off and then just put it back on the cooling rack. And why I have it on here is that so as the meltables kind of fall off the bottom, you'll see they'll just kind of like compile in on the parchment paper and then you can actually reuse the meltables. So they'll dry, they'll set up, they'll get back their like their snap, they'll get back that texture and you can just put them in a, in, in a bag, make sure it's airtight and then next time you wanna use them, you can, you can use them and it's really great that they will hold hold up they have magical properties <laughs> okay oops so the other thing is that if you had like a wider kind of dipping fork situation that that would that could help here too or if you had like a kind of a wider spatula but we're using spoons from the cafeteria <laughs> and we're making it work All right. Okay, so I'm gonna set aside our red. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you uh, how you can use the meltables and you can just melt them inside of these um, like pastry bags. They're just disposable pastry bags. I'm gonna use this part for the leaf. So I'm just gonna grab some, oops. And I don't need very many cause I'm, you know, only have a few of the apples. So I'm just going to put them in just like this and pop them in. And when I'm, when I'm doing them in the disposable pastry bags, I, I tend to only put them in for like 30 seconds, just because there's so few of them um, in the disposable pastry bag that I don't want them to like overcook. If you cook them too long or too too hot, they'll seize up, which means they'll kind of like clump together. This might have might have happened to you before, where you there'll be like a little burn spot. Maybe your microwave runs a little hot in a certain area, and there'll be like a little burnt spot. Anyway, so I just tend to be like a little more safe than sorry, and I'll kind of baby step into microwaving it. So I put them in for about 30 seconds, and then I'll get them out and yeah, see, these are already totally melted. So had I put them in for like straight up one minute, um, they might have they might have run the risk of getting a little little toasty. So so I just have them in my disposable pastry bag, and I'm gonna cut the tip, just probably like a quarter of an inch of the way. So I can have more control over my apple leaf. And I'm just going to kind of pipe. A leaf like so. So I'm just kind of winging it. Whatever you think an apple leaf looks like will be great. So I'm just squeezing the disposable pastry bag as I go and kind of equally applying, am I blocking it? Sorry, applying some pressure like that. And I would say if I had, let's see, you can't, you can't tell how cute they are yet. We'll move them over here. But if I had like my chocolate, the chocolate meltables, I would pipe a little stem. So you can see this, uh, Callie's cookie cutter has like a cute little stem right there, but I don't have them out on the table, but that's something you could add if you, wanted. So since we're under these hot lights, these probably won't set up um, before we're before we're done here. But depending upon like how hot your 
your house is or your kitchen is, you could just let them set up at room temperature. Um, or if you wanted to kind of expedite them setting up, you could just go flash them and put them in the fridge for, you know, 10 minutes or so, and they'll be totally set up and totally fine. So see how here, imagine if you did like a bunch of these, right? If you were doing red apples for the your whole school, <laughs> all the teachers, you could see where like you would get a lot of excess meltables here. And again, all you could do, you could just set this parchment paper aside. And once they've set up, they'll just be like, like the little wafers. They will, they'll literally just set up like this. They'll be odd shapes, but they'll set back up. You just put those back in a bag and you can, you can use them again. So I'm going to swap out the parchment and we're going to move on to some of the notebooks. And as if we have time, we will do, actually, I'm just going to go like this. Waste not, want not, my friends. Oops. And then we'll just flip this side, even though it's got a little red right here, but we're doing the best we can with what we've got, right? Okay. So next, shall we do, should we do a blue, a blue book? Let's do blue. So I'm just going to throw these into the microwave for one minute. And just like the red ones, they, they melted great in that, in the one minute time. And I'm also going to get some of the black colored meltables and put them into this pastry bag because we're going to do some, some piping, just like we did with the leaf, but we're going to do some writing, which is a little bit technical, I would say, with the meltables because their consistency changes as you're working with them, meaning they'll, they're, when they get cooler, they get stiffer and they harden up. Whereas if you were working with buttercream, you know that like, oh, you, you know the, the texture and you know that it will be smooth if you're, if you're piping. It's not like it changes from super soft to super hard while you're working with it. But the meltables, again, because of the way that they're, um, their makeup, they, uh, they will harden as you leave them out longer. So just something to be aware of. If you wanted to use buttercream on top of the meltables to decorate, you totally could. Um, but for today's class, we're just going to do all meltables. So again, I just, yeah. Got a, I actually got a couple of questions. How how much would you say is actually in that container? Would you say about a, a cup is in, in your plastic container? So we, so in this bowl, actually we put in the whole bag, which is 12 ounces, which I would say is about two cups-ish. Um, yeah. Yeah, good guess, whoever said that. <laughs> <laughs> and, about, and about how many are in the actual um, piping bag you just put in there? Oh, like how many did I put? I only put in eight. I only put in like eight little wafers. So not very many. So, and that'll go, that'll go far because you'll see, I'm going to cut the tip of the pastry bag really small again. And so you're not really using that much if you're just like drawing a line or writing, you know, writing a word. Whereas obviously with the, you know, with the red, um, or like with these notebooks, we're like dumping, you know, we're, we're doing a little dunking session with, <laughs> with the, with the treat. So you'll definitely need more of the meltables to do this process than you do if you're just doing like some little embellishment on them. While you're doing that, that I just want to let you know about a good yeah. idea that Cynthia gave is that um, you could always use like a popsicle stick when dipping. Totally. Yes, you absolutely could. In which case, I would say using the thicker ones, it would be easier because, here I'll hold this up, you can see this is pretty thin. And if I try to stick a popsicle stick in there, it would be 
I would say it would kind of um, disrupt the structural integrity of the, of the tree, right? Like it might be a little too thin to get it in there to have it like hold itself on the stick. So I do think the thicker one, the thicker treats would be better um, for a stick just because it's like sturdier. Personal opinion, preference, but that's an excellent idea and comment. Thank you, Cynthia. That is so helpful. So, so helpful. So again, if you had like a dipping fork, that would be, I, that would be ideal. If you, again, if you were like not wanting the, <clears throat> you know, maybe you don't want the bottom covered in chalk, oops, covered in the meltables, which is totally fine. You can just do the top and kind of spread it around like this. Just a matter of personal preference. The other thing that's fun with these meltables is like doing, um, using some of this, see how we have leftover, you know, pieces and edges here. You can form them together in, in a ball and do like little rice cereal treats and then dip those into the meltables and they're so good. And very, very helpful treat to have around for anyone with like a gluten intolerance. They can, can eat these all day long. <laughs> I guess if they're the gluten-free rice cereal, I should make that a, shouldn't make that claim, but they are a simple fun treat for sure. So again, this one I just dunked all the way in because why not? And shake off any excess. The other technique you can use instead of like using your hand, you can just kind of lift your cooling rack up and down to kind of help some of that fall off. So, all right. So let's set aside our blue and I'm gonna put in our, um, our black ones in here. And let's see, uh, every time this, this here microwave gets me every time. Okay. Um, in the interest of time. So let me rewind. So I would say like in a normal situation when you're in your own kitchen and you're doing this, I would suggest kind of doing the decorating in steps, meaning if I were doing these <clears throat> apples in my own kitchen, I would coat them or dip them or however you wanted to get all the red on there, then I would let them set up. And then I would come back after they've set up and do my leaf. Again, this is just per personal preference, but it just adds like a little bit uh, more dimension where right now you can see again, cause we're kind of under the, the warm lights and we don't have the luxury of time. Some of the, um, like the leaves have kind of melted into the red. So there's not like a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's not like a clear, you know, delineated line of like, here's the leaf and here's the red part. So if you, if you let kind of your base treat set up first, get it to the point where when you touch it, it's totally dry. Um, and that can be achieved again by setting it in the fridge for, you know, 10 minutes or so. Or if your, your ambient temperature in your house is, you know, in the low 70s, then you can just let them set out for 20, 30 minutes or so. And they should set up. Um, not in direct sun, not under studio lights. Um, and then you could come back and then do your leaf or like you'll see with these notebooks. Um, we'll see how the, the lines look and once we start to pipe the words, but that's just another kind of technique that you could use to add some dimension to your, to your treat. All right. So um, in the spirit of that, I had mentioned a little bit earlier that the that writing with meltables, I would say is probably one of the more like technical techniques, just because again, the um, 
how hot the meltables are determines like how much control you have over what you're piping. So it might be that you start piping and then like all this, you know, all these meltables come gushing out of your pastry bag. So what I would recommend first is just that you again, kind of baby step into melting them. So you, you don't put them in for the full recommended time on the back, which is about it starting off at a minute. I would start at, you know, 20, 30 seconds again, if you're doing like this few, and then just kind of see, see how they are. So I'm cutting like a quarter of an inch off the top. And I'll show you here on this um, paste or on this parchment bag, bag, parchment paper rather. Just we'll see how hard or how, see, test the, the texture. So that looks pretty good to me. I put these in for about 20 seconds. So again, you don't want, if you're doing kind of more detailed piping with the meltables, you don't want them to be super, super, super hot because they'll just flow, it'll just flow out. Like you wouldn't have any control. Whereas with this, you definitely have more control because the, the meltables aren't as melted. That might just take a little bit of finesse and practice. So don't beat yourself up if you like try it and you can't really get control over it. The good news is though, is you can practice on parchment Let's pretend this was like super hot and it all came flooding out and you um, and you weren't happy with how it was looking. Let it set up, let it get back dry, and then you can just repurpose the, the meltables and, and practice essentially and get it to the point where you feel, you feel like you know those meltables and their, <laughs> their texture. So again, don't beat yourself up if it doesn't come out exactly the way that you think it should the first time. All right, so again, these in an ideal world would be set up and dry, but given the time constraint, we don't have that luxury. So what I'm gonna do is just pipe the words. Should we do math? We'll do math. Math was very hard for me. I got to be really good friends with my high school math teacher and I went into her class every day so I could excel in some regard <laughs> in math. So anyway, um, so I'm just gonna pipe and I'm just applying equal, equal pressure as I'm piping and I'm just not doing anything special. I'm just gently squeezing. And, and again, if, the, if these were um, set up, I don't know if you can tell that well on the screen, but the meltables are kind of just sinking, like these letters are kind of just sinking into the blue, which is fine. It's just a little bit of a different look. And then I'm just going to draw a little few lines. Yay. So fun. Did, did, did that work for everyone or would you like me to show you another one? <laughs> Are we good? I'm happy to do so because we definitely have a couple more. You good? Okay. So let us, I'm trying to think. It's 2.50. Felicia, how are you feeling about time? Because I could do one more and show the pencil. Um, We're good. Um, like I said, we have about nine more minutes. Um, Charlene just came in with a question and she said that okay. she's new to baking oh, and the yay, term welcome. set up um, has been useful and she was trying to figure out what I guess if you could speak what it more means. into that term yes yeah okay so I'll show you so here are so these are the meltables and you can see they come in these little wafers so they're like 
they're dry when you touch them. They've got this really great snap to them. And what happens when you put them in the microwave, that's when they become like this, the soft, creamy liquid um, texture, I guess you could say. But what happens is when they cool and when they have time to, to cool down so they're not as hot, um, then what they do is they essentially dry exactly back to this texture, meaning they've got that crisp to them. They're hard to the touch. When you touch them, they're not going to like, you won't get like yellow on your finger. Whereas right here, if I touch this math right now, it hasn't set up. And so I've got blue. So when I say set up with the meltables, I just mean like that they've dried completely and they've got that kind of shell that like hard shell <laughs> touch to them. I hope that's helpful. Um, was it? I think I so. Hope. Okay. I think so. And so we're asking, um, someone's asking if you can do the pencil. Yes. Yes, I certainly can. I just put in the yellow meltables for the pencil and um, we'll just give it a minute to melt and I'll throw in the um, the pink as well. You know, I might just do here. We'll do the pink in the pastry bag. So I'm just going to take a few of these. And it appears we have a, a few people that are fairly new, so they are enjoying the class. Oh, good. I'm so glad. This is so fun. This is actually like the most fun thing for me to do is to like be here with fellow people who are interested in the same things, you know, I am. So it's, it's definitely fun. It's a very, um, I never thought that I was like a creative person, like growing up, I would never like characterize myself as that. And it hasn't been, hasn't been until these like year, later years of my life that I'm like, okay, I think I, I think I might maybe be creative, but only when it comes to treats. <laughs> oh, so I hope that you get some fulfillment out of this like creative process because it's really, really fun just to play around and come up with your own techniques and looks and recipes and all sorts of things. So, okay. So let's see, I'm going to move, let's move our little blue guy back a little bit. And I'm going to put our yellow here. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to show you the other ones I just like dunked completely in, right? But this one, I'm going to kind of be a little bit more methodical about spreading of the meltable just because there's three different colors that we're going to incorporate. So I'm just taking the meltable by the spoonful and um, kind of just pressing it, spreading it around. And we'll make our yellow go up a little bit more. Megan, while you're doing that, we yeah. have a couple of other questions. Okay. If the meltables can be used as icing, and then also if you can let them know how they can follow you. Oh, yes. Okay. So. So the meltables, as far as like a traditional icing, uh, no, because they set up like um, hard, you know, they kind of have that snap to them. They are awesome if you're going to use them for like a drip on a cake. When I use them on a cake, which I do, like if I make a layered cake and I want that kind of cool, like drippy look, I'll add just like a little bit of vegetable oil to them to make them a little softer because as you're, as they dry and as they set up, they'll get like, they get essentially are crunchy. Um, I say that loosely. They, so when you like cut the cake, you, when you add the oil to them for the drip, it's just a little softer to be able to cut through the cake. They still have like a harder texture. They're not, um, it's not like they're, you know, spongy or whatever, but it just makes it a little bit easier. And then also it makes it when you're, when you're doing the actual drip, it just makes it like a little bit runnier, which is also super helpful. Um, it just makes it so those lines when you do the drip are 
a little bit more fluid and go like a little bit further. Um, and then what was the other question? Oh, how to follow. So we have a um, Sweet Tooth Fairy Food Crafts uh, new Instagram feed where you can go and follow us along there. Um, American Crafts has their AC food crafting feed, which is awesome, where you can see all the fun things as well. And then I have a personal one that is my name, which is Megan Faulkner Brown, where I also show lots of fun cakes and techniques and also my little children. <laughs> so there's lots of lots of options. And then I have bakeries, I own bakeries, and that is just at Sweet Tooth Fairy. And that's where we do lots of baked goods and um, lots of, there's lots of options. So, <laughs> so follow along in all the ways. That would be so fun to have you. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this bad boy over here so you can just see a little bit better. But, so I melted the pink in a pastry bag and I'm just gonna do a quick eraser and all I'm doing is kind of just going back and forth while I'm squeezing this out you you could have easily I could have easily just have like melted some in a bowl and then like you know dip to the end but since I knew I didn't need a lot of it then I just use this and I'm kind of just smoothing it out. And then I'll take my chocolate, or excuse me, my black color, which might be, I'm gonna nuke it for just a, probably 10 seconds or so. Cause like I had said, it'll set up once it starts to dry and it's not as warm, it'll get a little bit, the texture will change. So I tried to push that out the end of the bag and it was like, like a little, you know, a little line of of uh, meltables. So let's see. Okay, so now that it's a little warmer, my block in it. I'm just gonna take the black and just kind of go back and forth. You've got our, our little, our lead there. And then we'll do a line. Like so. So yay, we've got apples. We've got, should I, how can I turn them so they look cute? Oh yeah. So they look cute. This is where I get, this is where I need to just stop where I'm ahead. Cause I'm like, okay, now I have to go back and make them all look <laughs> perfect. But anyway, so, so fun. So super easy. The ingredients are very reasonable to buy. You might already have them at your house. Um, the meltables are also very reasonable to buy. They're at your local Michael's store. If you don't have cookie cutters, that's totally fine. You could freehand cut some stuff out, um, you know, or you don't even have to do them in shapes. You could just do them in squares and use the meltables to, to dip them in and add some sprinkles or just add some, some drizzle. Um, there's lots of different options for you to do, but thank you so much for coming today. I hope you had fun. I hope your back to school preparations go well. And I hope to see you back here soon. I have a class in two weeks, um, the 12th of August, I believe. And so please come back and we'll play again together. So have a great day and I'll see you later.